Hey guys, so today I want to make a video going over on how to get your Slayer ready and prepared for tier 17s and how you know when you can run them. You know, and a lot of inf good information about tier 17s in general, as I know this is where a lot of people struggle. Now, I've had people reach out to me saying like, hey man, I'm struggling with my build, I'm struggling with tier 17s, you know, what am I doing wrong? And sometimes the build does look like this, um, which is, you know, like boots that are worth like two alchemy orbs, this bell, which is complete vendor trash right like selling the features is completely mediocre and if you're trying to do tier 17 with a setup like this you will just fail i will say just straight up the bat if you want to do tier 17s uh with my build i will say focus on this end game setup this setup can 100 do tier 17s at a pretty comfortable rate pretty decent you still have to avoid a lot of map modifiers which i will go over in a bit but yeah i personally did tier 17s on this mid game setup which I do not recommend unless you are a very experienced player and know what you're doing and know which mods your build can exactly handle. I was doing Fortress maps on day two of the league, which I know most people probably can't do. But yeah, this end game setup, focus on this and you can do tier 17s. So the first thing I do want to talk about is my POBs. So this POB is actually updated as of today. My latest POBs are always updated in my Google Sheet. I do try to update them in the video descriptions, but it's hard to update all of them as there's a lot of videos I do, right? So yeah, also read the notes. The notes have a lot of important information. I highly, highly recommend you read the notes. It has crafting guides as well in a crafting video. It has a whole FAQ section with a lot of information. Do read all of this if you are struggling anywhere in your build. And once again, this has multiple layouts, starter, early game, mid game, end game, and uber end game. And this end game setup, which I want to say is around 30 divines or less. It's pretty cheap nowadays. Terrigation is pretty cheap. Uh, you can get a pretty cheap Lethal Pride. SSL Vision is like 5D, I think. Arms Anguish is cheap. Tamens are really cheap. Yoke is like one or two divines now. The only expensive pieces here is maybe the Claw. It can be anywhere from like 15 to 20 divines. And Ralakish Boots, which I think is 8 divines at the moment. So yeah, that's really it. These are the only two expensive pieces. Everything else is like one divine or less. So pretty cheap to get into tier 17, so I would say. And pretty effective at doing it as well so yeah let's go over what you really need to do to do tier 17s and also some faq stuff that i wrote down here so first things first mandatory defense for tier 17. this is my opinion the mandatory defense you want all these before you can run tier 17s at a comfortable rate so 100 spell suppression ralakesh ralakesh is very important it allows you to ignore more map modifiers and have 100 uptime on endurance charge is a big boost the defense because without relic cash you will enter some packs with no endurance charges which gives the monsters a opportunity to actually you know kill you because with no endurance charges you are a squishy build element immunity very very important being stuff like shock immune is a massive defense boost uh crit immune crit immune in this build by the way if you're wondering you just get on your chest with a essence of horror i do have a crafting guide for that as well in the pov notes very important this pretty much makes you crit immune fortify Fortify, you also get it in your chest implicit, or you can also take this Fortify wheel right here in the mastery with melee hits Fortify. Either one works, but yeah, you need Fortify. It's 20% damage reduction for all types of damage, very important, and seven frenzy charges, which also means seven Duran charges, which is your main defense in this build. So seven frenzies is just essentially taking every single frenzy node on the skill tree, pretty basic. Next thing I wanna talk about is why I focus on evasion over armor. So the most dangerous mods in high-end Juicin is physical as extra Ellie map modifiers slash altar mods, which armor does absolutely nothing against. These are the attacks that will kill you. A big physical hit, which you have enough physical mitigation, is not really going to kill you. It's going to be these big fizz as extra Ellie hits, especially when comboed with other mods. The other reason is a lot of altar mods or map modifiers just completely brick your armor. So there's map mods that have less defense, up to like 89%. If you take that mod, you have zero armor, now it's useless. Same with the evasion as well, to be fair, but like a little bit of evasion is better than a little bit of armor because of how armor works. If you can only choose between 5k armor or 5k evasion, pretty much every single time you're choosing 5k evasion in a map and scenario, because 5k armor is usually pretty useless. Armor is only very effective when you stack a lot of it, while evasion is good pretty much at any amount. It's also really good to stack a lot of it as well. So yeah, that's why I focus on evasion over armor. So yeah, if you are focused on tier 16s, then armor is completely valid. You can even use determination over grace if you want. Next, 
also is why I don't run the shield Svalin, I think it's called. So this shield right here, the reason why I don't run this shield is the same reason as I don't run like that much armor. It's because of map modifiers. So there's two map modifiers that completely brick uh, block builds. One of them is just you cannot block. So obviously that's pretty bad if you're running a shield like this or if you rely a lot on block. The other one is I believe negative 40% block chance, which gets cut up to I believe like negative 66% block chance or something. 70% block chance. Either way, it completely breaks your block build as well. This is why I don't run the shield. Once again, I do think the shield is very, very strong in tier 16 content or Delirium or Expedition or Ultimate or whatever you're doing, right? I think it's very, very strong tier 16. It's just not good in tier 17 juicing when you're trying to run as many map mods as possible, which is what my build is pretty much capable of doing. I can run every map mod in the game outside of like five, I think. That was the whole point of my build and it has succeeded in that regard. So running this shield essentially means you can't run two map modifiers in tier 17s, which is not very good. Now, like I said, you can run this shield and you can just skip those map modifiers in tier 17, but then you're running the issue into spending more time in your hideout rolling maps and spending more chaos per map as well. But that is a choice you can make for yourself. Why hits can be to claw? So this is the same reason as before. It's a common trend here. It's be able to run more map mods consistently. So there's two map modifiers that completely can brick your accuracy in tier 17s. One is just straight up like negative 44% player accuracy. If you run that mod and you only have 100% chance to hit, um, then your damage goes completely in the gutter because negative 44% accuracy at 100% hit chance means you go to like 56% uh, hit chance and you have as essentially no crit because how crit works in this game, it rolls twice first to our um, enemy's evasion. So yeah, you lose something like 60 to 70% of your damage, if not more, when you run those map modifiers, which can, can completely break your damage, completely break the map for you as well. This is why I do believe the hits cannot be evaded on Claw, or in my case, the dagger is just very optimal for tier 17s. Once again, if your goal is to run as many tier 17 map modifiers as possible, it's also pretty much the same DPS as a tri Ellie Claw. I pop this quite a bit, and tri Ellie and hits can be evaded are very, very close and similar in damage. And the hits can't be rid of claw is cheaper to make. And once again, it allows you to run a more tier 17 map modifier. So I personally highly prefer it. Why claw and shield over two handed sword? So first and foremost, it's more defense, especially versus attacks. Once again, going back to the point before, the most dangerous mods in high end juicing is physical as extra Elliot map mods. So, and usually most fist damage is attacks, although there are some fist spells as well, of course. So the more defense part comes in from having a shield. I did talk about block being bad, but if you're just gonna have free block in your shield like I do, right, then it's essentially, you know, if you have a shield like this, which 35% chance to block, then if you don't run those map mods or maps you're running don't have those map mods, I mean, then, you know, one in three attack hits just aren't hit hitting you, which is really, really strong for defense for essentially, you know, quote unquote free, right? I'm not really giving up anything by running a shield because the weapon is already ideal for my build. So yeah, this is a big reason why I run the shield setup, both of my early game setup and my end game setup. It gives you a lot more defense versus attacks. The other reason is also elusive. Elusive is absolutely amazing. And if you don't know how elusive works, it gives you a 15% chance to avoid all damage from hits, which gradually goes down to 0% and then it resets and goes back up to 15%. But we also have a lot of elusive effect in this build. I believe we get somewhere around up to 34% chance to avoid all damage from hits on this build or 36%, which is a lot of defense, you know. Once again, it does gradually go down and the buff just reset. So it's on average uh, somewhere around, I believe like 17% chance to avoid damage from hits. So this combined with evasion, combined with a little bit of block, we have quite a bit of avoidance versus these big uh, attack hits that might have a lot of business extra. And those are the attacks that will kill you. So yeah, this is why I run Claw and Shield over two-hander, because what I'm trying to do in these high-end juice maps, it is just straight up better. Also, Life Gun Hit is just extremely good. If you ever played Life Gun Hit before, it just makes you feel very, very tanky. Um, a basic Claw is also very cheap. A two-hander can be very expensive. You know, a two-hander isn't really worth running until you have the enchant for like double weapon damage, which is pretty expensive. I see the bases or the swords for like 60 plus divines, while a basic Claw, the one I have in my POV, I think at most is like 20 divines, what I sold mine at. You probably make it for a lot cheaper than 20 divines. So yeah. Which tier 17 is easiest to run? 
So Fortress is by far the easiest map to run. It's what I do recommend if you're just starting out in tier 17. Sanctuary is also not that bad once you learn to fight. Just don't run increased AoE on this map. But yeah, overall, Sanctuary is pretty easy. You just have to learn the boss fight as well. Outside of that, I would not recommend Ziggurat, Citadel, or Abomination. Never run Citadel. This map is just terrible overall for like profit or boss fight. Abomination boss fight can be really annoying and really toxic at times as well. It's fine once you have a lot of DPS, but before then, yeah. Can I Reno? If you learn a boss fight, it's actually not too bad. And this is the highest profit map in the game, at least as of recording of this video. So if you do want to learn it, go for it. Just don't run increased AoE on this map as well. This map also has a lot of chaos monsters in the map. So if you're not chaos rest cap, you might die a bit on this map as well. So keep that in mind. Also, the most important things about running tier 17s is having to roll your tier 17s properly. This is the most important part, and it's just a learning process. I can't give you a single regex. A single regex does not work. You have to look at the map mods. The reason is, is that most map mods by itself are runnable. It's when the map mods are comboed with a, another map mod that makes the map completely unrunnable. So for example, right here, this map has Fizz Extra Cold and Fizz is Extra Lightning Damage. By alone, these map mods are actually fine and not too bad to run, but if you combo this with negative max res, then you're completely dead in this map. You're going to be at negative max res, and I believe negative 36%, with map modifier effect, with a ton of fizz as extra elemental damage. So you're just completely dead in this map, right? This is why you cannot use a single regex just to regex out all the bad mods, because mods by themselves are fine, but combo together are really, really terrible, you know? Another bad combo could be like monster damage and fizz extra chaos damage if your build has low chaos resist. If it has low chaos resist, fizz extra chaos is not the worst, but there's like one or two extra damage mods on it, then that might be unrunnable for you. So yeah, I hope this makes sense. I do have in my FAQ of the map mods that you should never run, stuff like reduce action speed, but in, ter in terms of overall, you just have to learn which map mods you build can or cannot handle. There are of course some map mods you should never run as well, like reduce 100% reduced crit damage or like 140% monster life. You should not run those map mods until your build is very high like not mine. Like personally, I can run those map modifier effects that makes the boss very tanky. But if you're starting out, you can't. So that's the other thing as well. This is the same is true for tank mods. Running one tank mod can be fine. Running two tank mods can be okay if they aren't that bad. But running three can completely brick your map. Once again, unless your build is very, very, very high end. So you just have to learn which map mods your build can handle and you know, at the current state of which your build is in. If you're on high end like mine, I can pretty much run every map modifier in the game outside of like five, like I said, which was the goal of this build. Also, if you're struggling tier 17s, if you're just starting out, if you're following my POB and you're just in this end game state, then do take off some map modifier effects. This will vastly make your tier 17s a whole lot easier. Map modifier effects, if you don't know what these do, these do scale every single map mod on here, which means more negative all res, more, you know, fizz extra chaos damage, right? So these make your maps a lot harder as we take roughly 90% increased map modifier effect. So if you want to make your maps easier, just take off these wheels right here, you know, this, this, and this one right here, and even some of this top hat over here. And you take off all these nodes, put into scarab nodes if you want. I think scarab nodes are probably the best replacement. If you do that, your maps become a whole lot easier. Now they do become less profitable, but being able to run and complete the map is a lot more important than having like 20% more currency earned in a singular map, right? You want to make sure you're always going to map boss in every single map you run. So I do recommend until you have like head enter and maybe even nimmies is to take off some of these map modifier effects. I take every single one because my build is very, very strong. So just keep that in mind. Also, last thing is just pay attention to the altars you click. Taking two altars, which give monsters physics extra, can lead to death if you're already running a map that already has other damage modifiers, like 70% increased monster damage, for example. So you have to be careful. There is also a very, very rippy tier 17 map mod, or my bad, a ultra mod that gives you like negative 45% physical damage reduction. That is really, really bad because you're getting all your physical damage reduction from endurance charges. So if you lose all your endurance charges, then you essentially have no physical mitigation and you just ship that to a big fizz hit so i would not recommend to click on alter unless you're very confident with the current save you built yeah at the end of the day even the most tanky builds in the game will die with certain 
modifiers no matter what you can have like a 1 million ehp you know character pob but if you roll certain map modifiers and take certain altars you're still dead that's just how tier 17s are they are extremely rippy and you have to learn how to roll them properly so i do hope this video helps you if you are more new once again the tldr is look at the new pob this is updated it is a little bit more tanky as well more life all that 4.7k hp look at the notes crafting section here faq upgrade order um, also tinctures i guess i forgot to mention but i did add tinctures to these pobs this is very very good for burst dps you activate a valid line strike activate the tincture then valid line strike for the snapshots but yeah these are bugged on pob though these aren't 80 percent more damage they're more like 40 percent more damage if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below or you know come join my twitch as i'm usually streaming daily